Hello there and welcome back to the Friendly Filmmaking YouTube channel. Today we're going to be unboxing the Panasonic Lumix G5 kit box from Costco. I want to encourage you guys to check out the Friendly Filmmaking Facebook group which is right here at FriendlyFilmmaking.info which is located right on the end of my finger. Anyway, um, with that I just wanted to introduce you to the box. So here we have the Lumix G5 kit. It is the uh, DMC-G5K um, and you can see from the uh, little box here that it comes with two lenses, not just one, and a low pro compact DSLR camera bag. Let's open up the box. And inside the box, <clears throat> first thing we see is a 16 gigabyte Transcend SD card, which let's try to get that up there where you can see it. And um, it is a class four card. It does, uh, does not have any kind of uh, speed rating located on it that I can see. Um, but it is a class 4 16 gigabyte card. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. Um, let's take and put that aside here. And uh, the tape back in there. And over here on this side, we have a low pro camera bag. Has the front flap here. It's got this side pocket here. It's got a little SD card emblem right here on the, uh, the pocket, if you take a look at that. And uh, it's a little kind of a fuzzy microfiber pocket. The rest of this is all nylon. And I'm just going to go ahead and stick the SD card right down in there. And uh, we'll zip that back up. On the sides of this bag, we have a couple of pouches here probably just big enough to fit into uh, to fit your lenses into just something quick and easy to fit your lenses into to tote them around for your gig um, then let's buckle well we don't want to buckle that back up this box is making an awful lot of noise so I'll set that aside for the moment and um, yes that's duct tape on my pants <laughs> Ask me the story. Um, here we have uh, a nice strap, which is uh, the low pro strap for the, the shoulder. And um, we'll go ahead and pop that off there. It's got that little plasticky thingy bobber. Pull that out. And um, this is just a little twist tie that's on the side of this. I'll put that up here so you can see this. That's our little uh, shoulder strap here. It's a nice long adjustable shoulder strap. Should be just fine for most people. Has a kind of a um, almost a rubberized leatherette type of uh, material on the one side in the middle so that's pretty cool kind of like that and we'll set that aside for now it's got uh, a little divider in here it's got little uh, removable dividers but inside here is the prize um, another thing I like that they did is they put a little uh, you know like a little desiccant packet in here keep things dry I recommend for all your camera stuff if you don't want your gear to get damaged by moisture make sure you know throw a little moisture absorbent packet it's got these little um, dividers with velcro on the side so you can configure it any way you want these are not like the fuzzy microfiber kind uh, but the inside of this is like the fuzzy microfiber kind this is like nylon stuff but uh, I'll give you a closer look at the inside of this it's like this almost flannel uh, microfiber stuff and then it's got another divider right here with the flap 
that sort of moves back and forth. That's kind of nice. Okay, so we'll put this back in here for now. And that's the Low Pro camera bag that comes with this. And this is the uh, Panasonic Lumix G Vario uh, 45 to 150 uh, tele lens, photo lens. Let's go ahead and open this up. And inside we have, of course, the most important thing is the manual, which you are going to want to read up. No, really, you should read this, actually. I probably won't, but you should. Uh, I always like to go least important to most important. So let's take a look at this uh, fancy lens hood that comes with it. This is, uh, it's a round, it's not like a tulip one, it's just a straight cylinder type of uh, lens hood. Looks, uh, looks to be reversible. So you should be able to put it on your lens and then reverse it to put it back. Comes with all this wonderful plastic. And more of this staticky foam stuff. And I will bring you up closer so we can hold the glory. Oh, more foamy plastic. That's awesome. Let's put the lens hood down. Da, da, da. Bom, bom, bom. Okay, there it is. There is our uh, wonderful Lumix G Vario telephoto lens. It, um, I'll take a look here to get a load of that. All right, try not to drop it, Bryce. That would be really dumb. So it's the 45 to 150 HD lens. Okay, it's got the Micro Four Thirds connector on it. So this is going to be an autofocusing lens. That's pretty nice. It's a uh, telephoto, so you get to really kind of expand on that. All right, and there we go. It's a little bit of a wide angle lens. You can definitely see the uh, arc of the, the lens on there. And it's got a manual focus ring, so you can put it in manual focus. Let's take a look. It is a uh, 4.0, it's a, like a F stop 4.0 to 5.6. Uh, 45 to 150 millimeter lens and with this I'm going to go ahead and put that I'm going to put this uh, take a look at this and the uh, lens hood fits right over it and it is also reversible so you can slap it on there and have it nice and compact. It does, I mean, for a 150 millimeter lens, it does fold up pretty short there. And I'm just gonna stick that right here in the side pocket of this bag for now. And we'll put the box back in the big box. And getting back into the big box, take this little divider out of here. And over here we have the big prize, the Panasonic Lumix G5K. It is the DMC-G5K camera. It is 3D capable, and um, and the uh, the 14:42 lens on it has an f-stop of 3.5 to 5.6. And uh, let's just open her up, why don't we? Alright, so we have all the uh, software that comes with it. We have the uh, Silky Pix software, which um, I don't really install that. But uh, then you have the DMC5 Owner's Manual Advanced Features. Um, 
probably for people that want to get a little more in depth, but also probably has a PDF version of this manual. Um, more than likely. All right, so you have the um, Panasonic Lumix uh, shoulder strap. Uh, people like to call it the neck strap, but uh, they've been telling us not to hang our camera around our neck. We hang it around our shoulder. So uh, the Lumix shoulder strap. Let's get a load of the Lumix G logo down there. There we go. And I'll put that back over here. And more plasticky stuff. Over here we've got the uh, charger. This is an external charger. It's good to know what comes in the box. Comes with the external charger here. It's got like a four pin connector on it and it's got the little fold out gizmo here. It doesn't have a cord so you have to have a space that you can really plug that into. Um, I have one of these exact exact same charger that comes with the GH2. So I suspect it comes with a, a number of uh, Panasonic Lumix cameras. Um, more notes, UL listings and stuff. Underwriters Laboratory. All right, we have a battery. Battery that stock battery that comes with the uh, GH2 as well as this one. This is the DMC BLC 12 PP. It uh, it is a 1200 milliamp hour 7.2 volt lithium ion cell, and um, these typically last anywhere from uh, from 40 minutes to 55 minutes from my experience. Uh, I don't know. I If I have a gig, uh, like a concert shoot, that lasts any longer than that, I typically will swap out the battery. And you can get cheaper batteries, but I will say that with these batteries, you get the battery indicator. With the third-party batteries that are not Lumix batteries, you don't get to see your um you don't actually get to see your battery indicator so you never know when your battery is going to go out um this one here it's a replacement looks very similar but inside of the lumix one is some circuitry to give you the actual battery levels this one doesn't have it so you may end up with uh running out of battery before you're done this is a 1200 milliamp battery this is not an extended battery and you can get some extended batteries, but they won't be that extended because they have to fit inside the space. However, there are some DIYs that show how to uh, adapt, like RC batteries. This is a 7.2 volt, so you could use an RC 7.2 volt battery as long as you had it plugged in the right way. And there are ways to do it that work pretty good, but you don't get the battery indicator. And um, over here, we have a uh, USB cable. They have this kind of funky little USB cable. It has a, it's, it's like a mini micro B connector on it. And then uh, there's your standard USB. So um, this is gonna be for transferring pictures, but you don't necessarily need it if you just pop out your card, if you have a card reader. But if you don't have a card reader, this might be handy in a pinch. And uh, I'm going to keep it in the wrap because almost nobody uses these cables. And the lens. So we have the uh, Tulip lens hood. Let's take that out of there. This is called a tulip lens hood because if you hold it up like this, it looks like a tulip. Anyway, this is shaped like this so that you can uh, shoot wide and not get the corners of uh, your frame running into your round lens like or your lens hood like I showed you earlier. And this also is reversible. And then this is... Da, 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 bum, 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 bum. I know, lame, huh? So this is the Lumix 
uh, f 3.5 to 5.6 lens it is a 14 to 42 millimeter tele lens telephoto lens all right and it has the uh, wonderful clip-on cap all right your lens hood will fit on it with or without the lens cap and you can shoot with it on there but you can't access the uh, focus ring from this lens at all with the tulip on it and um, that's the back side there it's got the micro four thirds connectors on it okay and uh, so that's a beautiful lens there which is the lens actually that I'm shooting with right now um, shooting with the very same lens on the GH2 alright so now the moment of truth you want to see the camera this is the camera body this is the Panasonic Lumix G5 and uh, you'll notice right away that the controls are very 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 similar to the GH2 uh, it has a hot shoe has a stereo microphone connector or a stereo microphone there and it has uh, a flash built-in flash of course uh, it does not have the HDMI uh, and microphone input in fact uh, it does have the, the HDMI over here on this side where on the GH2 it normally has the um, normally has the SD card slot so there's that uh, but the remote port on this is only for a remote it's not a microphone input this camera does not have a microphone input keep that in mind so this right here used to be like on the GH2 it's the uh, HDMI and the remote slash uh, microphone input and uh, has audio video out and all that stuff so uh, now you notice that the d-pad on the back of it is silver instead of black most of the controls are very similar except the uh, play button is no longer up along the edge here it's down here there's a couple of things that are different um, about this but not much uh, most of it is pretty much the same uh, you'll notice right away the LCD is really nice and it has the touch focus you can follow someone continuous autofocus uh, with the screen and um, you'll also notice that it doesn't have as many little focus zones as the GH2 does so uh, you're gonna be a little a little tiny bit limited as far as like the places that you can put your little focus zones where you touch the screen to focus on things but really for the most part a lot of entry-level uh, videographers this is going to be a killer camera the uh, screen is articulated and uh, you can turn it 90 degrees this way and then 180 degrees that way so 270 degrees of motion and back you can also flip it this way and back so you can look at look at it like a standard DSLR this has that kind of uh, rubberized eyepiece here really nice it doesn't come with a cover um, but it does have a function to sense when your face is up here so that it doesn't leak light and stuff it'll turn turn that off and so you know you, you can you can uh, turn off certain things anyway um, the front of it looks very very similar and uh, very similar to the GH2. In fact, if you had the two side by side, it'd be uh, you'd be hard pressed, except for the fact that it doesn't say GH2 right here on this to tell them apart. Um, on the bottom of it, it has the battery compartment slash SD card compartment. So the SD card goes right here along this edge of the battery compartment. Battery only goes in one way, and then it clips in with this little thing here. So if you have the battery here, goes in there, it snaps in the little the little uh, black piece. On the GH2, it's gray. On the G5, it's black. Anyway, it works really well, really slick. And the other thing is that I like about this camera and the GH2 both uh, very similar 
the uh, quick release plates, if you put them this way, you can still open up your battery hatch. You don't have to take your quick release off to swap your battery. So you really don't lose uh, a whole lot of time trying to transition and stuff. This is another little gadget that you'll notice that is different right here. This is the zoom control. So you notice the, uh, the shutter release has been moved slightly more to the front and the record button has been moved a little bit further back. In between the two is a little left and right toggle. This is for zoom control. So this camera can control motorized zoom lenses unlike the GH2. So another little bell and whistle that the uh, G5 has that the GH2 doesn't. There's a few uh, cut down features to simplify it, but there's also some other cool stuff that makes it a really cool camera. Entry level camera, uh, it's a little tiny bit lighter than the GH2, not a whole lot. I know people complained about the GH2 being too small and too light, but uh, I have pretty big hands and I know this thing kind of disappears in my hands. But I'll tell you what, I'll take a versatile camera uh, and stick it on a rig. You know, I usually shoot with a rig anyway, so I'm really not terribly worried about that. Anyway, um, I love this little camera. It does a lot of cool stuff. It's 1080p and it shoots um, uh, 60 frames a second and it has a whole bunch of bells and whistles. Um, and it right out of the box without even hacking it, it's a pretty cool camera. I think I think you'll like it. I recommended for our school to buy two of them. This is one of those two. The other one is at the school right now. And um, so we're gonna next uh, next term we will be shooting with the G5. Anyway, thanks for watching the friendly filmmaking channel here on YouTube. And uh, please be sure to check out the friendly filmmaking group on Facebook at friendly filmmaking dot info right here again on the end of my finger have a great day hey if you like these videos please subscribe and uh, I'll try to keep you up to speed on what's going on and uh, leave us your feedback in either the group or the comments below and I'll try to bring it up in the next video that I make and have a great day bye bye